before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. I almost forgot to hit record because Steve and I were just laughing <laughs> about the circumstances of the world around us and the shenanigans we find ourselves in in this timeline. And then I was like, oh, yeah, we, we actually were going to record a show. But I'm super, super thing. excited. I know you guys know Steve. He's been on the channel a lot. But I, Steve, 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 you just uploaded your first video to your channel, channel, Mystical Dynamics. You already have 53 subscribers, which is amazing with only one video. And you already yeah, have 128 that. views. So you, the views are really important. So you're already off to a really really good start and as always guys i'm gonna have steve's links down in the description box below so please make sure that you are subscribed to steve and i know a lot about what steve's going to be doing on his channel and his his the theme of his channel and what his his whole purpose is for opening his channel that's kind of what i wanted to talk about because it's such an incredible idea steve so first of all where do you want to start like who is steve who is steve let's get philosophical first who are you steve <laughs> Well, as soon as I figure that out, you'll be the second <laughs> to know, and so will everyone else. No, um, as I said in that intro, and I can't believe that I have that many subscribers and that many views for a 30-second video to say, hi, how are you? I can't believe that. But, I mean, I, I'm i your typical Midwestern guy uh, who's a Star Wars fan, basically. And it was, I don't know if you can tell that with the lightsabers behind me, but, you know, uh, growing up, I was always kind of interested in the spiritual again, the woo woo stuff, uh, born and raised Catholic that, and, but there was always like, okay, I know there's more to it. And even as a little kid, I used to have debates with one of my older brothers and, you know, saying, I know there's a way we can make things levitate. I know I can sit there. And if I look at something hard enough, it'll fly to my hand. No, you can't, can't do that. Cause physics, excuse me. And I go, yeah, but we only use 10% of our brain. What does that mean? And I mean, I, I was probably like 10 years old, 11 years old. So I was always kind of looking at this stuff and then i i got a book called uh mind machines that you can build i love building things my background is a, is a mechanical engineer my first love was woodworking um and then do, building models and messing around with electronics so i love to build things as well as do a little bit of research and learning about how that thing works and i started to try to make this uh this little square piece of paper move by putting my hand around it, and my old man goes it doesn't work. That's stupid. And it pretty much killed it in my brain. And then fast forward to now, um, life got pretty interesting for me. I was a walking raw nerve, just I, life. I was done with it. And I went, all right, I can, I can do this the easy way and then have to come back into the meat suit or I can get this fixed now. So then I started talking to a therapist and this therapist, I come to find out was a Reiki master. And I go, well, what's that? Okay. And then that, that's kind of, that's always kind of, for lack of a better phrase, the gateway drug um, in a good way, <clears throat> because you start with Reiki and, and for anyone that's not familiar with it, that's healing, that's energetic healing. And it's the damnedest thing when a person's hand is about that far away from you, but you feel heat on your skin. It is the coolest thing. So then I start going to see shamans for soul retrievals and uh, crystal healing and meditations and all of that. And all of that has just been absolutely fascinating to me. But the thing is, is that when you look the stuff up on YouTube, 
you have two drastically different camps. You have the atheistic, for lack of a better phrase, this is all BS, this is crap, what does this mean? If someone believes in astrology, for example, it's a red flag, don't go on dates with them. And then you have it to where, okay, I don't know what drug you're on, and I don't know if I want it, because they had to sit there and it's like, man, it's what the hell? So the purpose of my channel is to, all right, I have these bookends. What is it in the middle? Both sides have an element of truth. Right. what is in the middle and that's going to be the purpose of my channel and you know that's where that's where i came from in a nutshell and how i got here i love that too because also with the, the male aspect now i come from a world it's so funny we always call for traditional yoga we always call vinyasa flow the gateway drug for uh, traditional <laughs> yoga because you can't find a lot of you know for most people who don't know you 99.9 percent .9 of the, the yoga you see in the united states isn't actually yoga like vinyasa flow isn't actually yoga it's a bastardized version it's a stolen version and it's an inverted version of true yoga but most people start with that and the same thing they start practicing that and then they go wait a minute like my situation, I was that's what I was practicing because I had never seen traditional yoga for a very long time. And then I started studying the actual yoga scriptures and I was like, but this contradicts what they're teaching in the classrooms. And then I was about to give up yoga completely. And that's when I met my first Ashtanga teacher, right? So the universe will step in, get you to that point of like wanting to give up. And then it steps in and says, but here's the other path. And so we always laugh about that. Like when Yasa flow, the people that actually sit there and think about it, they're like, wait a minute, this isn't actually, you know, and they, it starts to start you on your journey of finding, mm -hmm. finding the truth. And my case ended me up in, in India, you know, um, um, for you, you know, your journey. I mean, how, how crazy for an engineer to all of a sudden yeah. be into Reiki. Yeah. And the thing is, is that there was always that seed, that element that was open to it. But it's just, it's a, it's taking that, okay, the engineering thing, it doesn't, ne learning how something works isn't necessarily bad if you destroy it. This is something that Tolkien talks about in, in his, in his works of Lord of the Rings. Uh, I think the quote is, he who, he who destroys something to learn how to, how it works has left the path of wisdom. You know, just because, um, you had mentioned on a channel, uh, on your channel once, uh, at inception, there's a spark. There's literally light within the womb. Yeah. And so I looked into it and they went, well, that's because there's a, it's a chemical reaction. I think it had, it has something to do with, I think zinc and maybe calcium. I can't remember, but it's, it's a, it's a reaction. So there was an actual chemical reaction that happens and it's just, well, great. You figured out the mechanics of it that Still doesn't, doesn't dismiss the spirit, the spiritual aspect of it. Absolutely. Well, and, that's good too, with spirituality, any type of spiritual lineage, you're looking at this big question, like what comes first, the chicken or the egg? What mm -hmm. came first, consciousness or matter? And every spiritual lineage is going to tell you consciousness came first. None of this would be in existence if it wasn't for consciousness. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's too, the way our world works is too perfect in its synchronicities for this to not have an intelligence, an intelligent consciousness behind it. When I mean consciousness, guys, I'm not talking about the brain, right? The brain, as far as the mind and, and the head, is an organ like your liver and your heart. And it, it has its purposes, its survival purposes. But consciousness is something deeper than that. It comes with that spiritual aspect of you, which is eternal, you know? And so none of this could have been designed without that intellectual overlord of consciousness. Call it God, call it whatever you want to call it. It's a vocab different vocabulary word for the same thing. And so, and that's kind of where all spirituality lies, whatever lineage that you're 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 coming from, is that the matter only exists, the physical world only exists, only exists because the spiritual world exists. Yep. Not and the other way around. And that's why, you know, one tool that I've learned to use over the years is the five whys, and that is break it down. Okay, thing A happens, why? Thing B happens, well, why? And you get all the way down. You basically turn into an annoying three-year-old trying to figure this out and understand it. And that's, that's the perspective and the approach that I want to take with this. I mean, for example, one thing, and it's great. I apparently come up, I need to keep a pad of paper next to me while I'm driving because the best ideas I have come while I'm driving apparently. 
I got to thinking about astrology. <clears throat> and one thing, and I, Bryce, I think you and I have talked about this off camera. I think one reason why it gets a bad rap is the, it is used as a way to avoid accountability. Right. Oh, I'm a such and such sign. My house is this, that, and the other. And it, it, y'all, I'm not an expert on astrology. There's multiple, multiple, multiple books on this stuff. And even then I'm going, what in the world are you talking about? But one thing I've learned, and I, this is going to be brought up in an episode down the line, is the it's actually kind of a cheap guide. It's kind yeah. of like back in the 90s, you had the, the walkthrough guides next to the Nintendos back in the store. And it was, all right, how do I complete this? The level? dummy, the dummy books. What, the dummy, the dummy books. books. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the, all right, this is what you are. This is where you're at. This is what you need to work on. Yeah. And a lot of people don't see it that way. And it's, you know, another way that I look at divinations, though my first episode is going to be is, is about tarot. The divination stuff, it's only a compass. It's not a GPS. Exactly. It doesn't exactly. sit there and tell you, all right, turn left here, turn right. You're going to meet the love of your life and then go forward. 500 feet will be your twins. No, it tells you the mountain is that way. Good luck. Yeah. And as you look and you hear the wolves howling and animals just fighting and you're going i'm not gonna fucking go in there fuck this shit i'm out that's all that divination is yeah and that's what a lot of this stuff is that i'm finding out and it's all about energy as well that's something i brought up in my brief trailer episode and it's i mean i've always i, I loved the concept of blacksmithing and it's you you take steel this very very hard material and i can heat it up and drop it in a bucket of water and it'll split because it, I sucked the energy out too fast and that caused the material to contract slower on the, on the outside while the inside is still hot trying to push out and it messes with the forces inside and it causes it to split. Yeah. And then so you have a bunch of these half drunk smart asses during the Renaissance looking at these blades that are absolutely gorgeous that have stood the test of time that are in museums and they're looking at it going, oh no, that ain't the right shade of yellow. That needs another 30 seconds. They put it back in the, in the, you know, in the forge. And it's just, that's energy too. Yeah. I mean, the basic, the basic energy equation, it's literally an accounting trail. It's energy in, energy out. You have your potential energy, which is something lifted up and you drop it. Kinetic, you're moving. Yeah. Lost you to work, which is friction. Yeah. The simplest, simplest of ideas. And I always loved it because that was the break in, sem in the semester for me because that was the easier stuff. And so you just have to say, okay, it's an accounting trail. Where does it go? Where does it come from? And now you take that idea, you have entire sciences back behind it, not science as in trademark 2020, all rights reserved, but actual scientific process. And now we move it over here and say, all right, how does this work? You know, what I saw another tweet from someone and they go, well, what is an energy block? And you go, that's a good question. I never asked that question. And it's, can you measure it? Like we can talk about block chakras and the energy systems and all of that. And I think, <clears throat> I think one reason why, cause it's always the, it's disproportionate women that are into, that's into this stuff more than guys. Yeah. My working theory behind that is the, is the fact that you have a womb and that entire system because I, as, and I worked, I worked in the automotive industry for a while. So I had to look at everything in terms of a system. How does my component affect the surrounding components? And then how do they affect mine? So yeah. I have this very system. I have a, literally a systematic way of thinking. And it's okay. So you have this part of the population that literally have a radio receiver for a soul. And you even look at how it's laid out. Kind of looks like an antenna. There are antennas where it's like concentric circles next to each other. So you have like two circular going into a, a center pole. And I'm like... Okay. So a you have that body, tap in. You, that's a portal too. Like a woman's a woman's yep. body is actually a portal. I love what you're saying, Steve, because this is and we were I was laughing offline about how frustrated I get with the spiritual community because true spirituality is just what you're talking about. Ram Das would often refer to like the modern day spiritualist as being the spirit, spiritual materialism. Like people who dress up and wear a shit ton of mala beads. Like you're not supposed to even be wearing your mala beads, guys. Mala beads are supposed to be, no one is supposed to see them but you. They're kept in a pouch. They're for Japa meditation that you use them by yourself. You have a way you work the beads. They're not to be worn. 
So people will dress these parts to look like they're enlightened or look like they know more about and it's, it's it's spiritual egoism as well which the ego is the false sense of self and all of this the friction you know what we go back to like what is an energy block well if we think about the source of creation which is consciousness an energy block is an attachment from the mind and when it's so that energy of that thought mostly subconscious is what creates that blocked chakra and i loved you know, I think you're right. In a lot of cases, we see people cling to astrology because I love astrology, but they cling to it like it's an escape route or it's mm -hmm. it's the, the why they are the way they are. And that is not spirituality. You know, a lot of like Ram Dass, and to, to reference him again, like anytime you're studying something or observing something in spirituality, he would always use that. Oh, interesting. Okay, so for me, I'm an Aquarian. So one thing about an Aquarian is that we tend to detach. Now, some ways that can be beneficial. Some ways it can really screw up a relationship. So I have to be aware of that, right? So that's something that's interesting about me and my soul, my consciousness, my soul needed to refine that part of itself. So it picked this particular roadmap to take in this in this life and that's not obviously that's not the only thing i have to work on but that's just something i can use for astrology's yeah. perspective it's an easy example yeah so so i can't say to my boyfriend don't get mad at me for not responding to your text message i'm an aquarian and that's just how we are i can't say that i have to say i acknowledge i hurt your feelings so i didn't pick the phone up right away because i have the tendency to do that and I, I acknowledge that that might have to do with my astrological placement. And not, now I'm aware of that. So now I can work on that and work on that friction, work on that tendency to refine, to polish that side of my soul, if that makes sense. So, yeah, it's yep. not, you know, it, it's it's not. And sometimes I, you know, when people get super overwhelmed with that stuff, I'm like, just take a step back for a moment and think about yourself. Like, what are your characteristics? Yeah. And that again goes to um, Steve in the Yoga Sutra is like, that's the crux of the Yoga Sutras is that P Patanjali, who wrote the Yoga Sutras, was a scientist 5,000 years ago. And he had this like quandary, like, why do humans suffer? Why do we go through depression? Why do we have anxiety? And so the Yoga Sutras, which I... I don't know where I'm, um, here's my copy right here. Um, as a bunch of my books just fell, here's <laughs> one of my copies. It's, and this is a commentary. So there's commentary by Sri Swami Shichinanda. And you guys, you can find so many different commentaries. Ram Das is a commentary, but the Yoga Sutras are literally just observations that this scientist made when he was studying human beings. And he realized that we suffer as humans because who we think we are isn't actually who we are. So I identify as Bryce. You identify as Steve. I think that's who I am. It's who I am in this moment for this ride, but it's not who I am eternally. Now, if I confuse that, if I think I'm Bryce and that's P that's it, period, well, Bryce is on a timeline. The ride is going to end one day. The ride's going to stop and I'm going to have to take the seatbelt off and get out of the car. So if I think that that ride is who I am, but also know I have to leave the ride, then it's going to cause suffering. Right? Mm -hmm. And so Patanjali goes... Well, if we take that suffering and that friction and we lean into it and we can observe it, then we can start to realize, oh, I'm actually the watcher. I'm actually just the soul having the human experience. Yep. And I can use this nervous system. I can use these emotions, this astrology, to, to fulfill the point the reason why I bought the admissions ticket to take this ride anyway. And there's a teacher, um, Richard Freeman, uh, a famous Ashtanga teacher, who would say sometimes, you know, with like the practice of yoga or any really spiritual practice, really what you're practicing for is your own death. 
And so when that time comes, when, <laughs> when of course, yeah, of course when is. that time comes and you got to leave, the, it's time to leave the body. You're like, okay. Yeah. That's fine. There's not that attachment. All right. We're going to go for debriefing. Going to yeah. go to the boardroom. We're going to hear the voice. What did you learn? <laughs> oh, I, I should have listened to you. You're going to listen next time? Probably not. Get down there. <laughs> go you know? back again. Take another ride. Oh, I thought you loved me. I do. This is tough love. Get your ass down there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's basically, you know, so the more you can, like, you, when you talked about the whole idea of, like, unaliving yourself, because we can't say the S word on YouTube. Yeah. Um, you know, that's such an incredible thing to, to have the observation because that's what all, you know, I know a lot of religions will say, oh, that's a sin and you're going to go. No, it basically that what you said is what it is. Like all spiritual, um, lineages will say the same thing. Like when you do that, you just have to come back again and keep taking the test until you pass. Like, yeah. It, so you can either do that and cop out now, or you can say, there's obviously a lesson here. And, and and that lesson has to be presented in the form of suffering or else we wouldn't pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, there's, I, I'm sorry, Bryce, go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead. You go ahead. Well, the, and, and I know I, I refer to, I'm going to refer to Tolkien quite a few times in some of my videos because I, I love his works. Um, and there, I'm even toying with investigating was he actually channeling some of the stuff because especially when you look at the Silmarillion which is kind of his version of Genesis and the creation of the world that he created there's an there's a paragraph in there that every time I read it I adore it more and it's I'm not going to say it verbatim but it's basically you have God and then what are basically his angels they have a jam session and and it, you know it's music it's called the music of the it's the Aina Lindale, the music of the Ainur and there's one that puts discord in there and the and god resets the theme but he keeps it in there he goes on and the wave and now it gets to the point where there, there's so much chaos it's like waves bashing on rocks and god stands up and he stops it and he goes y'all are mighty this guy is more and i want you to know that no matter how then no matter what you do you cannot alter the music to my despite and it will only make my creation that much better yeah and it's when you look at that and you go okay i'm going through hell right now there's a little bit in the you know you can look at the disc at um at that despair which is thinking you can see the end beyond all means or hope and sometimes and it, hope is a very strange thing as well because you can have the optimistic, oh, come on, guys, this is great. We're, everything is fine. It's literally nuclear winter out. Yeah, it's that's fine. called, it's that's all called toxic better. positivity, yeah. Right? Yeah. And then you have it where, no, things are bad, but I have to go through it anyways. Yeah. And there, there has to be a light at the end of the tunnel somewhere. That's not a train. And so yeah. that's, that's a lot of ways that, I'm, I look at spirituality and a lot of this stuff. And, and that was what I had learned when I was going through my dark night of the soul. And that as, as a traditional yoga teacher, that's one of the hardest for me. That's one of the hardest jobs that I have to do is because you know, when you go to like fake yoga classes, the teacher will like read you poetry and tell you to get comfortable. Mm -hmm. But that's, uh, you know, potentially in the yoga sutra says, no, actually you're going to have to get into a place of deep discomfort for anything to change. Yep. And so when we look at like the traditional yoga practice, it is designed to trigger you. It's designed to hurt. It's designed to make you want to punch a wall. And as a Mysore teacher, I cannot sit there and be like, oh, it's okay, just skip it. Yep. I have to sit there and look at the student and say, no, do it again, do it again. Within reason, of course, I'm not going to push mm -hmm. people. If, that, I, if I see somebody is emotionally about to break, I'm going to pull them back a little bit, you know, and um, and that's the hardest job for me is to say, yeah, this fucking sucks. I know you're, you're in pain right now. Yep. But do it again. Lean yep. into it. Watch your mind. Watch your thought. What is it that's coming up for you? Observe it. Don't attach to it. Feel it, but don't attach to it. Yep. And then when you face that, you know, I'll give you guys an example. When we look, because, you know, if we look at like 
So the, the Purusha, the Prakriti, or the Shiva, the Shakti. So the Shiva would be like the soul, the spirit. The Shakti is its creation. So your body, your experience, that's the Shakti. So the life. So Steve is the Shakti of the consciousness in Steve. Bryce is the Shakti of my consciousness that isn't Bryce. Right? It's like if you're driving a car, the Toyota is the Shakti, not the person driving the mm -hmm. Toyota. Yeah. So this Shakti and your consciousness, your infinite wisdom, every single micro nuclear little part of you in your life is designed in, for a perfect friction for what your soul needed down to your gender, your race, everything. When I first started practice, I had back surgery when I was 17 years old. Um, and I, when I first started practicing yoga in the Western bullshit yoga world, which I'm sorry, you guys, vinyasa flow is bullshit <laughs> yoga. It's bullshit. Um, they would be like, because I have a, I have a scar on my lower back, and they'd be like, oh, don't do back bends, don't do back bends. So it was giving in to whatever this was energetically, which was not helping me. It was still holding me back. And then I got to Ashtanga, which is like drop back it's like back bend crazy ashtanga there's so many back bends and um i remember telling my first ashtanga teacher oh i have i've had back surgery and my first ashtanga teacher was like okay we do more back bends then <laughs> cool story bro <laughs> I, I was like never mind i never have that i had back surgery no and that's the only person I, i've told the story in second series there is a, a deep back then called Kaputasana and I punched a teacher coming at us. So the only time I've ever punched him, I <laughs> reacted and punched. And, but at this point, 18 years later, I can tell you one hundred with 100% certainty that even though that work was so fucking painful physically and emotionally, because it's only hurting physically because it's hurting emotionally, mm -hmm. right? That's the speed. That's the conscious that what came first, the egg or the chicken. Now I can tell you with full confidence that that was the most important thing I could have ever done physically in my experience is all those backbends. And now I'm a damn good backbending teacher because I've had to like really, really work on it. And all my stomach issues, a lot of my stomach issues all of a sudden started to, to correct themselves with deep backbending too because of the way you're moving the stomach. Mm -hmm. And that was actually when, when a teacher said to me, it's, it's not, it's not back bending, it's stomach opening. That's when something clicked in my head and I started to shift the way I, I took this shape. And so we were looking at to, to make a long story short, when we're looking at spirituality. We are looking at that scientific observation of why, okay, there's friction here. Why, why? And the only reason as a scientist, Steve, are you ever going to learn why by not investigating? No, not at all. You can't do it. That's why you have no. the the five what was it the five step scientific process. You come up with a you know you have a hypothesis, you develop a test, da, 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 all the way down to theory, making it into a law. That's why that exists. Yeah, it is a and that's that's the that's science, not yeah. the mm, Twitter told me so. So that's that's how I that's what I want to look at stuff. And, and Bryce and I are talking about a lot of deep stuff here, but I also want to cover some fun stuff. Yeah. Like, have you ever heard of the Rods of Horus? <laughs> yeah, I have. Those are cool. I have. <laughs> so this is fun. So you, you have, so the Rods of Horus, if you look at a lot, uh, at some of the, at, at some of the hieroglyphics, you will see someone holding two circles. It's these rods. And they're going, well, why are they doing that? And they also hold like a purse thing. I don't know what the purse thing is. But anyways, let's go back to the rods. It's a man so purse. You, Watch, they're going to come down and it's be a like, purse, it's yeah. called a man purse. <laughs> it's called a purse. Um, so you, I'm going, this isn't, okay. The, wow, that's interesting. So I got, start looking into it. And I eventually get a pair. And what they are is that they're two different metals. One is copper, one of them. Mine, I, the one that I have, it, it has a zinc coating on it. And this is the cool thing. When you hold one in each hand and hook yourself up to a voltmeter, so you just hold the different probes from the voltmeter, one in each hand, there's a voltage across the two. It's only a half a volt. A AA battery is only 1.5 volts, roughly. So it's a very, very tiny voltage, but it's just, okay, what did they know that we don't? 
this yeah. tiny, tiny little voltage here, because your your entire body is one giant. There's a bunch of electro electricity flowing through it. It's insane. It takes a, when um, when people get electrocuted. What it is is that you get more than an eighth of an amp across your heart. Your heart goes into fibrillation, and then it's and then that's how you that's how you die. But tiny, tiny little bit. Maybe it's not so bad. Maybe it resets something. You know, Bryce, you were talking about grounding yourself and grounding yourself is doing exercise. I would add to that, that it is also, I think there is truly an element of not only touching the earth, but electrically grounding you. And I, yeah. and, and, and again, well, I've done that's this. Why, on, that's why I, we do it barefoot. That's why every, all these ancient practices, yoga, jujitsu, any type of martial arts, it's all done barefoot. Well, one thing, well, I can't go out barefoot because yeah. I just had a short sm snow squall, currently 27 degrees at, at the station. So going barefoot, that's frostbite. No thanks. So what I did was I took the idea from computer builders and made a ground made a, a grounding strap You out of a copper bracelet, ran wire to my the grounding. Pro tip, folks, don't do this if you don't know electrical. There, there's my thing. I... I, I don't do this at home, kids. Don't do this at home, kids, unless you understand how to wire in a light switch, okay? <laughs> but I, but if you have copper pipes, let's say you can try this because what happens? All your copper pipes go to another outlet somewhere in your house that is buried in the ground. Your electrical system has grounding rods outside. So, and it's really interesting when I do this because it's I can't describe the sensation. It's very, very subtle. But it's almost like having the caffeine jitters without having caffeine. Yeah. And it's when you when I when I'll put this bracelet on and sit for a few minutes, it just kind of settles down. It's almost like you go, you know, if you think of like a heart monitor where it's doing this, it goes like this to like that. Yeah. That's also it, that energy is also held within your organs and your spine as well. So like when people use exercise as grounding, like when you do a back bend or a twist you're releasing held energy. And that's why like at the end of your, like a yoga practice, for example, you guys, it's not Shavasana, that's incorrect. That's another, Shavasana actually means retention of breath to the point of rigor mortis. So that's not what you're doing. It's all called Sukhasana. When you're lying down on your mat at the end with your palms face up and you're not engaging in that feeling of energy running through the body that you have. And you're letting that energy start to calm down right mm -hmm. start to calm itself down because it's running through all the organs to take that you know it drives me crazy because so many people will misunderstand and they'll think that all they have to do every day is stand out barefoot in the yard for 15 minutes but yet they're 300 pounds well you haven't grounded anything because you still have held energy that's not moving it's like if you have a hose and the hose gets twisted and the water's coming, but it can't get, so it's building up, it's building up, right? But if you don't untwist that hose, the water's not going to go anywhere. And so, and so many different, like in traditional yoga, there's a lot of cardio in traditional yoga. There's a lot of, you have to sweat. If you're not sweating in your yoga class, you're not doing yoga. That's part of moving. That's part of that, that tapas of getting that, that, that detox. The, the, as my teacher says, you're sweating your poisons out, which sometimes I think Indians have a way better, more catchy way of saying things. We, we say sweating your toxins out, but I like poisons better. Um, you know, and that's not just physical, that's emotional. And so when you, you know, let's say, let's just even take something like you go for a 20 minute run. Let's say you go for a, or a fast speed walk. You're literally moving your organs up, up and down as you do that. That's why if you go and watch or look Google pictures of people shitting themselves in a marathon, that's why that happens, right? Like I'm not, yeah. I'm not suggesting you do that. Like don't go purposely shit your pants and say, oh, this yoga teacher on YouTube told me to. <laughs> no, I'm just using that as an example, like that you are helping release held you know, the if the consciousness creates the matter, then releasing your shit isn't just a physical thing. It's also an emotional or spiritual. The two are happening at the same time. 
Mm -hmm. right? It's the expression, it's the Shakti of the soul. And the spine, you know, a lot of times in these ancient practices, we see, like, we know in our little world, people think that the obelisk is so bad, and it's so Cyrus is willy. It's not. It's, it's, it's the shaka it's the, it's the spine. It's the same as above, so below. It's the same. The spine is the, any, is the energy, where Shashumna is, mm -hmm. right? And so if the spine isn't healthy, if the physical spine isn't healthy, then the energy cycle up the spine is not going to be healthy. It can't be. Right? It's again that water with that hose. And so, you know, I know people get mad at me because we live in a world now where people just can't handle the truth. You can't handle the truth. You know, they can't like back when I was a kid, people just told you the truth. And if you had your feelings hurt, then that was your that was. But now and I think that's part of the talk of spirituality is we think we can't offend yeah. people. And so we're walking on. No, you need to be offended. You need to be triggered because that's when you're again, you can't fix something unless you investigate it. Right. You can't. Yeah. So when when I say I will not go to a tarot card reader, I will not go to a healer who is not exercising who's not working on themselves because that is fundamental. If you are not doing your own shadow work exercise, that's the root word of exorcism. If you're not doing your own work on yourself, how the hell are you going to be able to help somebody else? How the hell are you going to be able to use your hands to heal somebody else? If you have not cleared that energy and grounded yourself first this does not mean that you have to be an olympic athlete this does not mean that you have to be a size zero right at all this but you can tell in people's eyes you can tell in their skin whether they're actually detoxing themselves or not so mm -hmm. you know and that was something because i know steve you've been doing the shadow work challenges is that something that's new to you a concept that was new to you oh very new and even just do trying to do the sun salutations. I mean, my body was going, what the hell are you doing? We don't do this. We pick things yeah. up, we put them down and, you know, trying to bend and this and, and whatnot. It was, that was a new concept to me. And especially with the sun salutations, just how quickly you start sweating. Oh yeah. Well, that's insane. And they're very, they're simple moves. They're very, very simple yep. moves. And I'm they're not knocking hard. It. They're you know, supposed to be it, hard. No, but what I'm saying is the, but it, like you go down, you go up and it says, but it's, you start sweating real quick and it's just, you get that purging and you even mentioned in one of your videos, that's the fire yeah. rising up and that's why it's out. called and a it sun salutation. You're crap. not, you're not worshiping the sun. These Christians yeah. with their propaganda, they, it's all fake news. They've never studied this stuff. It's called Surya Namaskar in Sanskrit or sun salutations because the sun is like the mascot, the emblem for the pranic energy. What is pranic energy? It's the rising energy. So sweat, right? Sweat is pranic. Blood flow is pranic. When uh, when you go to the bathroom, that's uponic. That's down. When women have a baby, that's that's represented by the moon. That's the uponic. And we, we're juggling these two energies of up and down energy in our body. And so sun salutations, well, salutations or namaskar is a greeting. Mm. So it's telling you, it's basically warming your body up. Like this is a warm up to make you sweat, to loosen your muscles up, to get your blood flowing. That's what sun salutations mean. Mm -hmm. And even trying to follow um, a couple of the videos. Uh, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but the Ashtaga nurse. Morgan, there were, yeah. he, he did, he did a couple of things and I went, there's no way in hell I'm doing that. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, we're not there yet. <laughs> And, and you will over time. Like I always say that's the oh, Mysore yeah. magic where you first walk into a Mysore room and you're like, I'm never good. You see, you know, you walk into a traditional yoga room. You're not walking into a lead class. You're walking into what's called Mysore. We have the six different series and you're being taught individually by the teacher and you're everyone's at their own pace doing their own series. So you walk in and you see people, you see a room full of muscle. You see people putting their legs, standing up their legs behind their head, catching their ankles in a back bend, doing forward and back handsprings. And the beginner student is sitting there going, I'm never going to do that. But then six months later, they're going, maybe that is possible. Like maybe mm -hmm. in a few months I could do that because the body starts to shift and change. And again, that's science too, right? Yeah. Well, and the thing is your analogy of going back to the Toyota, that is a perfect analogy to look at the body and soul and all that because you have if you don't anyone that's owned a car and has never changed the oil how well has that turned out for you yeah 
you know, how, you know, you haven't maintained it, you haven't done anything to it, that car doesn't last long, it wears itself out much sooner than it should. Whereas if I take said Toyota, make sure that I go through my, my maintenance schedule, do my oil changes every five to 10,000 miles, that son of a gun will go, that thing may outlast me depending on when I buy it. You know, that's, that's exactly the root of all of this, you have to, you know, you look at it as though it's the mind, body and soul. Yeah. And the, you have to yeah. you have to keep that triangle going and flowing. There's one thing I had heard um, a theory idea that the mind it isn't that the mind stores everything; it's that the mind acts as a filter. Yeah, it puts. And yeah. it's oh, because now I, that gets me going. I'm a bit of a radio nerd, so now that gets me going. Okay, going back to let's look at everything as a radio wave. It's all energy waves. It's all vibrations. Well, in radios, you have a squelch, which is something that gets you can it's a setting you can do that gets rid of unwanted background noise. Yeah. OK, that is interesting. And now and, and I don't uh, I don't know if you've ever done this, Bryce, but I in uh, in a biology course I took, we dissected a lamb's brain. I dissected. Animals there is. Before, yeah, there yeah. is no wire, no chips, nothing. It is meat. And you look at it, that was honestly something that just my eye started to twitch because it just didn't compute because it was just, this is incredible. And it's just, how does that work? And it's, there, there's something else at play here. And that's the biggest thing is acknowledging, you know, there's something else at play here that we may not understand because we don't have the instruments to, to understand it. We don't have that ability to comprehend it just yet. But it's, you got to investigate and you got to figure out why. And that's going back to my channel. That's going to be what I investigate. You know, another you know thing it might is, be interesting for you to investigate too, Steve. I don't know if you've ever seen this you guys pitch in too, if you're watching Um, when we die. Now, when our body dies, it does, we do crap our pants. We do release fluids. So of course, some of the weight comes from that, but we also lo we lose more weight than we should. So what is that extra weight that, that leaves the body? Have you ever seen the CAT scan of someone who died as no. they're dying? So yeah. there was there was an individual that they were giving, a, it was either a CAT scan or an MRI. I think it was a CAT scan. And it was just their time. They were trying, they, the doctors were working their, whatever they were doing, and they were going, let's get a CAT scan. And if I remember it correctly, you can find this on YouTube. The brain lit up and then went dark. And it's... You know, wow, that's kind of, you know, and you look at it, now you bookend it, right? You have it where the mind lights up and goes dark. And at the very beginning, when you have at inception, conception, I'm sorry. <laughs> and it's inception. It's all the matrix. It's all the um, same thing. <laughs> you know, you have that spark of light. Well, that's an yeah. interesting bookend. It sparks, and, it sparks at the end. It, yeah. it, well, it's interesting. It happens in the brain because, you know, many cultures believe that the the uh, Ajna, the sixth chakra right here, the, is the third eye. That's where um, the spirit enters and exits um, the brain and or the, the body rather. And so it's interesting that it sparks there if that's like the big exit. And in fact, like in Hindu culture, they don't they don't bury their dead. You know, they everything. Everyone is cremated. And I actually prefer Hindu funerals to our funerals. I mean, we're drama queens. Like our Western. <laughs> they last a week. I mean, we get all dressed up in black clothes. We cry over each other. We, you know, have this big lowering of the casket. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's very dramatic. But the, um, the Hindus, and, and, and again, it's relative too, because right in Hindu culture, they believe in reincarnation it's part of their doctrine and so for them even though i'm not saying that they don't fear death i'm sure they do i think we all have a big there's all of us are going to have a little bit of hesitation because we, we, we everything's just theory um but it's more in their culture to know we live again so when someone dies they parade the body so they put the body they put grandma like in this thing that they carry flowers and food and they play music and they celebrate while grandma's just kind of flopping around. And then they they go to the ceremonial place, like where they do the, the ceremony. And the oldest son of the family is responsible. Now, and I know this sounds gross for us, but if you're used to this in your culture, then this probably is no big deal. Smashes the head to make sure that this is broken. And then they cremate the body to the point where they hear the pop of the skull too. Because that's telling them 
that every little last rem, rem, remnant of the spirit is now gone, is moved on. And I actually really like that. Like, I, that's how I want to go. That when I go, that's what I want done to my body because I, you know, it's just the Toyota, right? Yeah. And I want to make sure that every part of my 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 consciousness is gone and, and done with this life. It's been a fun ride. I've enjoyed it. The fries were really good. <laughs> Yahoo <laughs> review for planet Earth, you know? <laughs> The beach four out of five stars. The service was a little slow at times, but everything else was pretty good. The controllers are kind of gnarly, but um, but the beaches were pretty, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, five out of ten. We'll do again. Yeah. But. So so it's you know I I I and and being in that place of when you are in the spiritual, not to totally you know disconnect from your body, because but to actually live in the emotions and experience the life that your body gives you in this this in this time. As Thoth says in the Emerald Tablets, you only know death because you know life, or you only know life because you know death in this body. So having that, that, you know, and Sri Swami Satitananda in his commentary of the Yoga Sutras, he actually even says that, like, when you, I'm paraphrasing how he says it, when you recognize, truly understand, not just intellectually, but like integrate this idea that you are a spiritual being having a human experience you will start to really enjoy your life that there's there's a lot of truth to that yeah because you know you go, it's not permanent yeah and the thing is is that you can't because <clears throat> there's a lot of people that'll look at that and, and they'll say that that mindset is terrible because you you get the car you it opens the door to do car blanche or whatever you want with yeah. your life no and the thing is is that there is always the fuck around and find out curve is well, it's car, it's karma. That's karma. Like, yeah. fuck around and find out is karma. Yeah. If I'm going to, if I, I could never be a cult leader because yeah. that would be it. It'd be like, fuck around, find out. Yeah. Thank you for coming. You, yeah. Get out of here. Well, Don't the cross the line higher than eight. <laughs> yeah. We, the more you recognize yourself, you recognize this, you recognize friction, and you, because that's car karma, right? Karma is cause and effect, it's action, yep. reaction, right? So the more you at recognize that, and the more you study yourself because you are. You are under the laws of karma. Like, you, even though you are a spiritual being having a human experience, it's like getting onto that roller coaster. They will not start the roller coaster right until you put the seatbelt on or put that bar down, right? Yep. That's the law. You have to have that down. So you have to play out. And you also, the more you've leaned into your own suffering, the more you've used your own resistance, your own friction as a means to learn and to grow and explore, the more you've leaned into it, the more you empathize for everybody else doing it too. Yep. You actually, even though you you understand you aren't you you aren't permanently human, you have more compassion. Yeah. You see the soul in your dog's eyes. You see the the, the you can appreciate the lifespan of a tree because you now can step back and see it for what it is, and its experience for you and your soul to refine itself in this moment. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's not like, oh, all of a sudden you become a psychopath. Yeah. And you're like, fuck it. It's not permanent anyway. <laughs> yeah, don't <laughs> like, go no. rob a bank. No. Yeah, no. You know, no. You, and, and you don't do that. And and that's the biggest thing is the you're given the ultimate independence. Yeah. And with that, you can either use that independence to soar or you just drop like a rock. Uh, yeah. Your choice, though. It is literally dealer's choice in this hand. Yeah. And that's that's the biggest thing, and that's the, that's a huge takeaway. And it's it does give you something. It's a it's very different from you know, like I said, I grew, I, I grew up Catholic, the almost, pretty much fear based system. Yeah, that is in there. That if you do this, and you know, you do A, B, and C, you go against these rules, you're going to hell. These are I one of my brothers. We have, you know, you look up the definition of guilty Catholic. His pictures there. And but the thing is, though, is that we'll have talks over pizza and root beer that'll go four or five hours. And before it was, it was almost like a double helix where, OK, we'll intersect at some points and then but we're different here. And now it's as we've looked more into this stuff and we've talked more now, it's like a parallel path. Yeah, and it's just, there's a lot of stuff that's that's, you know, very, very interesting. Uh, one of them being um, St. Palestina where she was at uh at she had a vision that she was at the gates of hell and there was all these she was surrounded by demons 
And it was, you have no idea the pain that you've caused us because you've, ex you know, you've sent us out of humans, blah, blah, blah. And she prayed and her guardian angel showed up. Now, again, this is a Catholic nun. Yeah. Guardian angel showed up and it was, if you just say, to, if you just say, I don't consent to this, if, I'm, but I, I'm condensing the story down, but basically you have to consent to it. If you don't consent to it, God will take care of you. And the legions just went away. Yeah. And it's just, wow, that's, I've heard this story without the Catholic label. Wow, that's interesting. Because demons you know, are your demonstrators. Demons are, that's what they, that's what I love about like the Ramayana, you know, and Hindu, uh, Hindu theology. Like a lot of these demons are considered teachers, right? Like I've talked about the story of Hanuman in the Ramayana where Sita, the, the wife of Ram, gets stolen by the ten-headed demon Ravana, the demon who can't be slain. And Hanuman has to go and rescue Sita and defeat Ravana. And, um, you know, you guys should read the story because it's very more complex than the, the, the shorthanded Cliff Notes version. I'm the <laughs> Ramayana for dummies, what I'm giving you right now. <laughs> um, and basically, at the end of the day, Ram is God, Sita is your soul, Hanuman's your courage, and Ravana is your ego. So even your own ego is considered the, the demonstration of demons. And when you consenting comes in so many different forms like like living in your instead of like that's why shadow work so important like we have we all have these lower vibrational attachments like anger jealousy whatever that betrayal whatever that is gluttony um and if we don't if we if we cling on to our wounds as victims of them then we're consenting to that heavier demonic energy i mean look at what the big controllers of the world are doing they're getting us to consent by making the victimhood somehow sainthood, right? You know, you guys know what I'm trying to be careful about what I say, but you guys get what I'm saying with that. Instead of going, okay, I struggle with depression. I struggle with anxiety. I'm going to acknowledge that and I'm going to lean into it and I'm going to ask it what it wants me to know. And I'm going to try to take that heaviness and send it to the light. And by doing that, by leaning into it, by acknowledging it, I've now not consented to it. You know, mm -hmm. and so, and that's what comes up and that's, and that's so important. So yeah, that's the same story, but and in the, Catholicism. Yeah, you and know? the thing is, is that you, the way you have to do all of this is to have that proper teacher, that proper guide, you know, yeah. going through that depression yeah. You know, I mentioned earlier in this video that you know, I, I was working with a therapist. You need to have someone that's going to guide you yep. to not only let that out, to get that out, and but it's also going to say, okay, what did you learn from that? What are things you could do better? Yeah. Because How do now we... that retrains you, that re that re starts new to patterns. Re reformats your mind. You're creating new patterns at and, that point. You know, this is going back to something that I was thinking about with astrology. And it was, okay, so you, you look at the charts and you know, it basically, you give someone your date of birth, your time, the way that the stars were aligned, that's how you are. My question is, why wasn't it when my soul came in here? Why is it when I leave someone else's body? Why is that? And it's the just, question. or is one of them like a photo negative? And the only way that you can figure out that first one, because <laughs> no one sits there with a clock, Unless you're paying for it, allegedly. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, that's going to get people pissed. Um, <laughs> but you know but what? You, you might have just you might have just healed someone. There could be someone watching that's been very traumatized by the fact that that might be how they were conceived, <laughs> and now they have one up on all of us because now they go, "I know exactly when I was conceived. <laughs> now I can figure it out." But the thing is, is the you know you have you know all right so that that placement of the stars is that is that like a photo negative and so now all right this here is directly correlated to when you came here and then well when you come you know all right well no it's when you come out okay so now that raises the question as you're being born does that energy basically flash yeah. program your mind it's a firmware install basically into your own thinking meat as you're being born I don't know. This is stuff, again, this is why I need to keep a notepad near me when I'm driving. This is stuff I come up with as I'm driving. This is stuff that I've never heard questioned. It could I've be never that heard when you mention. are, it could be that while you're in the womb, because you're still within your mother's energetic body and physical body, you could be under the laws of her 
chart yeah. until you're then independent of that. Then you come under the laws of your own chart. But it's kind of like with astrology too, Steve. Like I was born on February 4th of 1983 at 6.31 p.m. In, p.m. in Greenville, South Carolina. I'm sure there were other babies born at that time at that. Yeah. But you can meet someone the exact same birth statistic, statistics as me and be totally different from me. Yep. You know, and that's because we're going to take... You know, I, I look at it this way, too. You could have, like, grandma's chocolate chip cookie recipe, her secret recipe. And after grandma passes away, so many people in the family can take that recipe and try to make the same cookies with the exact same recipe, but it doesn't taste the same. But it's the same recipe. So what is that difference? Yep. And if we're looking at astrology, all astrology is is the recipe. That's all it is. It's not the magic. Yeah. You're the magic. Mm -hmm. But then you take that and go, okay, so I, I, I'll look at it through the nerd's lens. It's a firmware. Okay, cool. That's the software, but it has to go into my body with my DNA. Yeah. Okay. Now, karma? how does that work? And my karma, which is, you know, they're saying now that DNA, that now there's acknowledgement that DNA holds memory of past lifetimes, right? So now all of that is integrated into the DNA. So it's the software now programmed into the firmware or into the hardware that, all right, now you have this person that's complete. Yeah. And now they go through this experience. You know, so and that that's how I'm looking at this stuff. And this is what I want to investigate and talk to astrologers and say, hey, what is this? We, you know, you know it's you interesting too, because we have three karmas we're working with, guys, all of us. We have our own karma, which is your karma from this life and past life. So just your lessons, your work. You have your 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 lineage. So in your DNA, you also carry the information and the work from your ancestors. So you have to honor your ancestors. You have to, uh, my boyfriend and I were talking about that yesterday. He had a teacher that would say, if you, if you don't honor your ancestors, you carry them on your back. They, they end up like, killing you because you have to honor that. You pick that, right? You pick that karma for yourself in this incarnation. And you also have the collective karma. So collectively, what we are all going through right now, you know, it's uh, it, not to change. I'm going to digress a little bit. What I'm talking about when we were driving back from Florida, we were listening to a podcast about time travel and time lapsing. And it's always made me very, I mean, I, there are certain time periods I would love to travel back to. Trust me, I'd love to be a fly on the wall for some of these historical events. But I've always kind of thought about it like me as Bryce, you as Steve, we're karmically programmed to be here now not there then so i don't know if we would even survive if you took me and picked me up and plopped me into 1500 would i combust because karmically within my dna now i have all this information from you know, the year 1500 to 2024 of all this lineage of people in my dna plus my own past life experiences in my DNA that could have existed after this point in history, plus the collective information. So would my body even be able to do that? I'll do you one better. Would that have been factored in to your karma? With Maybe, the fact that, I don't know. And, and this is one thing that I've always wondered about time travel and about, you know, a main plot point in a lot of movies and a lot of stories is that you get a vision of the loved one dying and you do everything you can to stop that and they still end up dying anyways yeah. and it ends up being by your own hand. So now that that goes into the question of, okay, was that, is all of that, is it all predetermined and is all of that factored in? Yeah. And so, yeah, could you, could you spontaneously combust because you just, you crossed the wrong wires in a, per, in a metaphysical sense? Absolutely. Or was it there all the time and this is something you had to do? And so now this is where you get into, this is why the pizza conversations last six hours is because you go down this rabbit hole and it's absolutely fascinating and fun, to, and fun you know, to discuss. And I'm going to try to do it inside of 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> I love it. You know what I love about you, Steve? Okay, when I was in the fourth grade, I had my fourth grade teacher, actually it was when my sister came behind me in the fourth grade. We had the same fourth grade teacher. And I'll never forget this. Miss Carol told my mom that there are two types of thinkers in this world. There are people who think black and white, and there are people who think gray. She explained to my mo mother that my sister thought black and white. She was really good at math and science. She wanted a direct answer. She needed a factual answer. And she said, Bryce, though, is a gray thinker. Bryce doesn't need a direct answer. 
Bryce is going to be really good at philosophy. She's going to be really, and she was right. This was when we were really little, right? She, these are these are your, your lawyers. These are your philosophers. These are your artists. Black and white figures are your scientists. But you, Steve, se seem to have both. Yeah, it's a curse. <laughs> <laughs> like, you make I it sound good. I don't need it. I, and I, this girl was right. Like, I don't need it. I can sit there in the unknown and be like, that's a good point. But was that program? I don't know. You know, and I'm fine with that. Whereas some people need it direct. And I think sometimes this is the, well, I think that the fake spirituality and the spiritual egos out there and the, the you know, as we said off camera, what the people that decided they egotistically Star Wars themselves here on Earth yep. at the time and they're, you know, which is all ego, right? It's all illusion and ego. It's wishful thinking, not intuition. Uh, I can understand why so many people are annoyed by those people. I'm in the spiritual world and I'm annoyed by those people. <laughs> most of the most spiritual people you will ever meet are some of the most grounded, most... Do you know who Krishna Das is, Steve? I want to say I do, or at least that name sounds vague. He's a name. very famous Kirtan singer. I'm not, I'm not really into Kirtan. Um, he's contemporaries with like Bhagavan Das and Ram Das. Krishna Das looks like Ned Flanders. <laughs> I mean, literally khaki pants, collared shirt, like looks like a dad at like at a t-ball game. One of the most spiritual people you'll ever meet. That is hilarious. So you can't, wait, wait, I always tend to, you know, I look at the Ashtanga world and like my peers in the Ashtanga world and they're literally in jeans and a t-shirt. They're not wearing mala beads. They're not out there you know, looking like, you know, the Dalai Lama or like wearing, you know, Kirtan, you know, you know I, mm -hmm. they're, they're very normal looking people. Yeah. Cause they're not trying to prove anything to anybody else. They're only, you know, the Ashtanga lineage is so hard. It's literally you against you. It's very humbling. And so, you know, I always want to be like, just be like Ned Flanders. Like, don't, don't try to, to put, don't put on the costume. You're already in a costume. It's your Shakti. It's your body. Well, and even in the Catholic faith, and even says it in the Bible, the when you pray, go to your room. When you yeah. do a good deed, do it do it secretly. Yeah, it's don't. you don't broadcast it out. It's that's all of this stuff is is just it's 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 you against yourself and the other you. It's it, you know, that's all it is. Um, you are your own resistance. You are yeah. your own demon. You are your own angel. That's that's the big that's the big secret. It's you against you. And I, I was so funny. I had a friend once that because the Ashtanga practice is so freaking hard and it's exhausting. And we were sitting in the lobby of the shala after practice once, like all drenched in sweat. You know, everyone comes out looking like Albert Einstein hair because they're so <laughs> sweaty. And most people's pants are on bed. You go to these vinyasa flow classes and people have really picked their outfits out and like braided yeah. their hair. You go to a Mysore room and people like have their pants on inside out. And, like <laughs> nothing matches because it's just so freaking hard that you don't give a shit anymore. You know, hair, you have Albert well, Einstein hair. It's in the name, my sore. Yeah, it's, it's in not, the and name. it's usually done at super early in the morning too. So no one's even, in, and everybody else in the room is doing the same thing you're doing. So you're not pressing anybody, you know? Yeah. And um, we were sitting on the lobby all sweaty and gross. And we're sitting there. And my friend, oh, everyone's just like shattered and exhausted. And my friend goes, you know, I don't know if Ashtanga just makes me a better person because I'm more spiritually grounded or if I'm just too exhausted to care anymore. <laughs> Like, a little column a, a you little really column exhaust, a. yeah like i don't give it a shit anymore road rage whatever i don't yeah. care i'm too tired to care at this point but there's kind of some truth to that like when you're on the real spiritual path you don't really care about ego anymore because you're so humbled by your own resistance you know yeah. i mean and, and you're also humbled by the fact that you're part of a greater whole yeah that's the biggest thing it's the, and we've talked about this in past episodes to where you are a fractal of God. That yeah. is not to be said that you are God. No, you are fractal. You are a fractal of God. So is and everybody guy, else. And that guy you're about to flip off because he cut you off and didn't use a certain signal. <clears throat> not that I've struggled with this. They too are a fractal, a fractal of God, God right? <laughs> you know, yeah. and it's well, got to that it's that it humbles you down a little bit. It knocks you down a few pegs and it's just like, all right. <laughs> well, it's almost like that whole realization is you're special, but you're also not special. Yeah. It's a paradox. And you're totally okay with that. Like Ram Dass had a very uh, famous uh, conference where it was the act of being no one. Like we're all trying to be someone, 
Well, the whole point of spirituality is to be no one. Mm -hmm. And that's not what we're seeing in the fake spiritual world. You know, I, I, um, we see a lot of ego, a lot of wish. People are confusing wishful thinking with their intuition. They're confusing yep. imagination with their intuition. They think meditation is actually like living in their imagination when meditation is literally quieting the mind, the mind to have a one pointed focus. It's not daydreaming. That's not meditation. You know, and so I think that people, in a lot of ways, we see this rampant fake spirituality where people's egos are are off the wall, which again creates that resistance to find true spirituality. Which is, I'm not special. I'm a no one, yeah. and that's what's that's where the beauty is. Yep. And I can be okay with that. I don't have anything to prove. I have nothing yeah. to prove. You know. And that oh. that that's the biggest thing. That's yeah. the hardest thing because I was uh, young, yeah. younger Freud. I can't remember who came up with the id, iliad, the id, ego, and super, super ego. I can't remember which one. I think it was Freud. Or as I call them, good Steve, bad Steve, and evil Steve. And that those are the constant ones that I'm fighting around. Sometimes you pull out evil Steve for a consult. Okay, what would you do? All right, we're going to make sure we don't do that. And then <laughs> you know, we, we give him the, the bucket of fish heads and he goes back into the attic. Um, <laughs> but the... You know that's that's the three part of the of the human being. Not to sound like a, you know you disassociate, yeah, and no. have multiple personalities. That is something drastically different, and it's bad. Yeah, real bad. You can observe that side of you without acting yeah. on that side of you. When that need to to be special, that need to show off, that need to to feed the ego, you can see that coming, recognize it for what it is, and then yep. tell it to calm down. Yep. Right. It is not disassociation at all. It's actually really finding yourself and really being able to see the false sense of self, uh, which unfortunately, sometimes when you do get into spiritual practice, that ego gets real strong sometimes because it's it's dying. It's And yeah. so that's what happens. You know, it starts to, you know. So I know we're coming up at an hour, Steve. Um, I want to continue these conversations with you. Um, these well, certainly. These, these deep conversations. And I just want to ask the audience, like, what type of questions they have for you, Steve. And... Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see what's, I have some ideas for you, for your channel, if you want to Oh, hear. that would be great. Uh, I'll that give you off, great. off channel, off, offline, because I think there's some really cool things you can explore, and I would like to see, and I think it'd be cool if you went through the Yoga Sutras as a scientist on your channel, <laughs> and looked at what Patanjali had to say, people were like, Yoga's of the devil, I'm like, Patanjali was a fucking scientist, being like, well, why are people sad? Why are yeah, people well, sad? Well, Reiki, um, I can't remember the gentleman's name. But like the the, the Asian the main, guy, yeah, yeah, he Japanese was a theologian. Guy. He was a theologian, yeah. and someone asked, "How did Jesus do this?" And he goes, "I don't know. I want to go find out." And so he goes yeah. and meditates for like forty two days or something like that. Yeah, and that's and then here you go, which is funny because we're just talking about how bad it is to meditate for that long. We can do a whole other show on that, but, on that for sure. You know, but the thing but, is, though, is that it was it started with a very simple question: How? How did he do that? And you, the theologian, never thought of it. Never thought to ask it. And that there wasn't disrespecting it. It was just curiosity. Huh, yeah. It's a good question. I never I never thought to ask it. The well, dude the, the dude John, in the collar told me that's how it worked. You yeah. know? The book of John, Jesus says, You will do these things and you will do them greater than me. So mm -hmm. what he was the healing of the laying of hands is Reiki. That's what he yep. was doing. So that's a really good point. Well, all right, you guys, make sure that you are subscribed to Steve's channel. Um, ask your questions down in the comment section below, and we will definitely have Steve back. Steve is actually going to be helping me, too. Just a little clipped hang <laughs> hanger advertisement. Steve is going to be helping me with some of Doug's work that we are going through, which has opened up a whole, yeah. whole, whole, t whole can of topics. Because, you know, Steve had done some shows with Doug as well. And Steve and I are going to be doing a deep dive into the process church of final judgment. But we're going to be do that, doing that on Gnostic TV, guys, because that for many reasons, for our sake. It's spicy. <laughs> it's spicy. <laughs> and I just feel like that protects us a little bit more because this is a very dangerous group. And we also don't have to worry about censorship there, all that kind of stuff. So if you are interested in Gnostic TV, that link is in the description box below. Steve is also an affiliate with Gnostic too. So he will have those links as well. So just to give you guys a little cliffhanger that we are going to be, we're, we're looking through some more information right now to really get as much information as we can to do a really great show for you guys, because holy shit, is that 
they're a scary bunch. So, um, so I can't wait to, I can't wait, but I am also a little terrified, but I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> uh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Maybe. It'll be fine. <laughs> Steve's got his lightsabers. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, it'll be, it'll be great. <laughs> so, all right, you guys. Well, thank you so much, Steve, for coming on. And you guys, thank you for watching. And please go and subscribe to our friend Steve's channel. All right. Thank bye, you everybody. Bye-bye.